Well, the Lord be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In fact, let's do something opposite of what most Lutherans do and be joyful, huh? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Welcome this day. Of course, those who uh, don't know me, I'm Pastor Gary Bickner. I've been in the Four Corners. I served Gallup for almost 30 years, and I'm retired now. And I jump at any chance I can to come up here and give you guys the word, you know. So that's a good thing. And I love doing it. And I really appreciate the Lord giving me the health to keep doing it. So the Lord bless you this day as we worship him. Bless you as we listen and learn from his gracious and wondrous word. And may he bless us in all that we do. The Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. begin by inviting our gracious Lord and Savior to be with us this day, and we do that by speaking those great words of the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, the Lord, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, that I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, Son Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes, for our steadfast love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever.
the Lord be with you. And with thy Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbor as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let me see it. Old Testament readings from Leviticus 18, 1 through 5, and 19, 9 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you lived. You shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, and to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statues. You shall follow my rules and keep my statues and walk in them. I am your Lord. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does not, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. When you reap the harvest, harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right to the edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You should leave them for the poor and for the sonier. And the Lord your God. You shall not steal and you shall not... Deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall remain with, shall not remain with you, all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf, or push stumbling block before the blind. But you shall feel, fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not do injustice in court. You shall not partial, be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness you shall, ju you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Thanks. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is Colossians, <coughs> excuse me, 1, 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in the Christ of Colossae, Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it's bearing fruit and growing, as it does among you. Since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth, just as you learned it from Ephesus and our beloved, fellow, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the hallelujah. God 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Behold, the lawyer stood up to, uh, stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, who shall I, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers. We they st who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed him on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he, sat him, then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three did, do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us now join together professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated.
join with me in a word of prayer? Dearest, glorious, and ever-living Father in heaven above, as we gather at this time, I, as your messenger, ask you to bless the message that is set before us and that you would bless all who are in the hearing of this message this day. Be with them, watch over them, and keep them each and every day in your loving care. And we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you bring to us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace, peace, and love to you from our gracious and ever-loving Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is good? It's a question we're going to address today. So in order to do that, I've come up with a little, some of the characteristics of a good person. First, a good person is selfless. They look to the needs of others. They are patient. They are sensitive. They lift the spirits of others. They volunteer to help others. They are a joy to be around. And they're willing to give their lives for the sake of others. Now, that's a list. I'm not saying it's total. It's 100%. But I think it's a pretty good listing. And we think about the idea today when we look at our, at our text that is set before us, we see several characters. We see, of course, the familiar story of the Good Samaritan. And that Good Samaritan is what we're going to talk about today when it comes to being who's good. But we first of all have to look at the characters in our gospel lesson today. The first one is that lawyer. The lawyer who comes around. And what is that lawyer he wants to do? He wants to test Jesus. Why is that? Why does he want to test Jesus? Because he wants to find out if Jesus really knows what he's talking about, first and foremost. And secondly, he wants to somehow or another justify himself. And so they get into the idea of the law. And the man, young man, this lawyer is keeping the law just as he was always taught. He goes to temple. He does all that he's supposed to do. And he keeps things. He takes care. He gives God everything. And he takes care of others at the same time. Or at least that's what he says. So what did the lawyer do? So is the lawyer, is he good? Is he good? I don't know. What do you think? And we get into the parable now. Because he asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? And so they get into this for a moment. Remember, a, gos a, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's not a moral lesson, okay? Don't make that mistake with parables. They don't teach them moral. Like all of a sudden, I want you to go outside and, and find somebody laying on the side of the road and take care of them, right? That's not what this parable is about, which you'll see in a little while. So the first character we have in this is the man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, right? Minding his own business, taking care of himself, going to Jerusalem, I mean going back to Jericho after being in Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, these robbers, these bad guys, can jump him and mug him and beat the living tar out of him, right? And leave him there laying for dead. So why did this happen to this man? Well, I'll tell you why it happened to him. Because of his sins. God is punishing him, right? God is punishing him for all the sins he committed, right? No? How do you know? <laughs> you want me to answer that? No. <laughs> uh, participation sermons are the greatest. <laughs> but... This, this man, of course, what I said is not true. That's right. It's not because of his sins or anything else. He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And these robbers came along and took care of him. <laughs> then the first person we see walking there is who? We see a priest walking by. Now you think, a priest? Oh, he's a good guy, right? He's going to stop and take care of him. Oh, no, no. But let's not be so hard on the priest for a moment. Remember, remember the laws? We read, you heard Leviticus today where a lot of these laws came from for ceremonial laws and so on. So the priest was walking. He had to go on the other side of the road. Why? Because if he got near or touched that person, 
who he probably thought was dead, he couldn't serve in the temple. Right? He could not serve in the temple. So we can't say he's all bad, right? Because he, he's trying to keep with the laws of the, of the Jewish people. So he can't be all bad. No. Well, so now we have a Levite. So who were the Levites? They were the priestly tribe, right? So they were walking in. So the, once again, we have the same issue, don't we? He has to walk on the other side of the road because if he touches this person, he has to go through a, a, a seven-day cleansing before he could go back in the temple and serve. And since they were coming out of Jerusalem, they had probably finished their time, but that didn't matter because now they didn't want to get dirty and have to go home and do all that, spend seven days cleansing themselves before they could do any work at home. So how bad was the priest? How bad is the Levite? Then we have the Samaritan. I always find this fascinating. Jesus used this example of a Samaritan, of all people, basically a half-breed, you know, was, on, was people who were disliked totally by the Jewish people. They didn't want to have anything to do with Samaritans. They were crud beneath their sandals. They did not like them at all. And yet Jesus used this example of a Samaritan who stops and actually helps this man. And they take him. And he takes care of him. And the man, of course, is going to live because of what he did. So, the good Samaritan, who is he? Let's first of all ask, who's the man on the road? Who's the man that got beat up? Would you believe it's us? It's us. We are the ones who get beat up each and every day by sin. Are we good? We like to think that about ourselves, don't we? Are we good? <coughs> Something to think about, isn't it? What happens when you go to a store and you see a cashier who's grumpy, who doesn't really want to deal with you, who doesn't even know how to smile, how do we initially react ourselves? Well, we get grumpy and we don't want to deal with her and we don't want to move on. We want to get in there and get out and get away from that grumpy person. Are we good? And then there's a great example. Happens every day. I know it happens in Gallup. I know it happens here in Cortez. And that's when you're driving down the road and somebody thinks they're, they got to be ahead of you. So they cut you off. What's your first initial reaction? Road rage, right? <laughs> but we do that. We think about it. You know, remember, we sin how? We sin in thought, word, and deed, don't we? We sin that way. <clears throat> and that means what we think we are sinning. It doesn't have to always be an action. How many of us sit around? Like this afternoon, you'll be at home and, and having dinner, whatever the case may be, and you'll say, did you hear what that preacher said today? I mean, you know, this guy is amazing, right? Gossip. We all do it, don't we? I have to admit, I do it too. So, are we good? Now let's get back to the Samaritan for a moment, right? Who is the Samaritan? That Samaritan is Jesus Christ our Lord. That Samaritan is who we worship and adore. He's the one who did so much for us. Remember his incarnation. Remember he was born of the Virgin Mary, but before that he was conceived in the, by the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary conceived of God coming down to earth called Emmanuel God with us right and then we see him going before <clears throat> John the Baptist going before him and being baptized 
and the Holy Spirit coming down and the voice of the Father speaking, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And then, of course, we have who? We have then Jesus going forth, calling his disciples. Well, of course, first he went to the 40 days in the wilderness. But then Jesus got his disciples. He went about for three years teaching, preaching about the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God was all about. He went to the lost sheep of Israel, speaking to them, bringing them hope, bringing them confidence, bringing them what they needed for so many years because the religious leaders ignored him didn't really give them what they needed. Be like me doing a sermon today in Greek and I'm sure you would understand every word of it. And that would really meet your need, wouldn't it? But not Jesus. He spoke to them in Aramaic. He spoke to them so that they could understand and know what he had to offer them. We all could not forget the Beatitudes, can we? Blessed are those, blessed are the weak, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are those in, weak in spirit, and so on and so forth. We have all of those beautiful things. And then Jesus not only did that, but then he stood before the high priest. He stood before Pilate. He stood before Herod. He stood before all of them, giving of himself, not defending himself at all. <clears throat> but going forth in his gracious name and setting himself up to be killed. To be killed not just in any way, shape, or fashion, not even being stoned to death, but he would be taken outside the walls of Jerusalem, the holy city itself, to a place that was unclean. And there he would be crucified for our sakes. He would receive the punishment for all of our sins once and for all. It always amazes me when I think about Jesus Christ and I think about all the things that he has done. That he gave of himself in that way. That what he did over 2,000 years ago still applies to today. Our sins are forgiven each and every day. He blesses us. And that's just the thing that just, in a sense, blows my mind because I'm forgiven. Every time I sin, I'm forgiven. And I seek his forgiveness. We then become the blessed ones. We become the ones who received the goodness of Jesus Christ our Lord from that Holy Spirit who comes to us in our baptism and touches us in our hearts and minds and gives us the faith to believe. He does everything for us. I have to tell you, I, I go crazy when people start telling me I have to do something more for my salvation. That I have to somehow go to church more. I have to go to Bible studies more. I have to, I have to, have to help people more. I have to do this. I have to do that. It drives me crazy because that's all a lie. God and Jesus Christ, our Lord, when he said on that cross, it is finished, he meant it. It is finished. All that he did was for once and for all time and for us. That is the beauty that we have salvation in Him. And He calls us, He gathers us through His Holy Spirit and makes us His own children. And that's what brings and places good within us. When you think about that list I did a little while ago, it says here, does this sound like Jesus? He's selfless, looks to the needs of others, he is patient, sensitive, lifts the spirits of others, volunteers to help others. There's joy to be around. Which one of us wouldn't find joy in being around our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And of course, the last one I had on there was willingly give his life. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. Willingly gave his life. In faith, we are so blessed. Because we know that God is good, that God is great, right? That his love endures forever. 
And we know that each time we see a baptism take place and see the beauty of that water and the word working together to bring that person to faith in Jesus Christ, we know how good God is. Every time we come to this table and receive the Lord's Supper, receive that wonderful blessing of word and sacrament, that blessing of his true body and his true blood, we see the goodness of God. And that's what we take with us today, because that goodness goes with us forever into his heavenly home. And I pray today that the Lord will truly be with all of us as we continue in the week ahead, that his goodness will be shown through us. And what a blessing that is to touch the lives of others. When we see that grumpy clerk at the register, we give him a smile instead of a grump. And when somebody pulls out in front of us, we can say, I forgive him. I've done it myself. And so on and so forth. We think and then we do. So may the Lord bless you in all this and may we go forth in his grace and love today and every day. And so I say to you, Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all of our human understandings keep our hearts and our minds in that one true faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise and continue with the offertory. gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, in thee. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For our confident faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the caring love for all those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and communities that those who grow in weakness and need may have a deepened trust in your strength to bear and your power to save, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. For our nation, that you would bless our leaders with your wisdom and guard us from the rising ungodliness in our land, so that your gospel may be preached boldly and continue to bear fruit and grow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are lonely, that those in care facilities, those who require ongoing care, and those in hospice, as well as our brothers and sisters in need in this congregation would be comforted by our mercy and visitation. And today let's place all those enlisted in our bulletin and all those that are listed in our hearts and minds and take a moment of silence to pray for them.
Let us pray to the Lord. 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 Dear Lord, we also place into your keeping this day all of our men and women who serve in our military. We pray that you would be with them, watch over them, protect them, and keep them every day in your loving care along with their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Dear Lord, we also place into your wondrous keeping all of our first responders, our police officers, fire people, EMTs and paramedics. We place them into your keeping to protect them and care for those who would come out to help us and serve us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who stand with the saints, who have loved you and know the delight of your favor, that they may be brought at last into your eternal presence in the marriage supper of the Lamb that knows no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty God, you have been faithful to us who desired none of your mercies. Lead us to receive them with grateful hearts and to be faithful into death that we may receive the crown of everlasting life. Hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who through whom, with whom, and in whom be all honor and glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Faithful God, whose mercies are new to us every morning, we humbly pray that you look upon us in mercy and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Keep safe our going out and our coming in, and let your blessing remain with us throughout the day. Preserve us in your righteousness and grant to us a portion of that eternal life which is in Christ Jesus, through whom be glory and praise to you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
be seated, make an announcement real quick that there's a lot of goodies in the back in the fellowship area for all of our newcomers and uh, and I hope everybody's invited, right? <laughs> so, yeah, everybody's invited. So the Lord be with you and bless you this day and go forth with his loving grace. And of course, um, as I said in the bulletin, I'll be doing uh, the Bible study to continue on with what uh, Pastor Luke has done. So there we go. So the Lord be with you and go with you this day.